When I was growing up, um, to be a drug dealer was a prosperous position. You are honored. As a teenager on the streets of Buffalo, New York, Guy Ionello hung out with gangs and experimented with drugs. Drugs were just pills at first, and then it went to marijuana, and then it escalated and, and got bigger and bigger, and the drugs became more of a friend to me than anything else. Guy joined the Navy in 1972. Instead of straightening up, he fell even deeper into the world of drugs. At that period of time, I got into drugs very heavily, especially in the military. In fact, I got involved in a, uh, a group of individuals, civilian and military individuals, that were involved in the drug world. And it really escalated my drug abuse uh, to where at one time I was uh, shot at and almost killed. When he left the military, Guy became a full-time drug dealer. But he was arrested in the biggest cocaine bust Western New York had ever seen. So at the age of around 20, 21, I was sentenced to prison for life. After serving only a year and a half of his life sentence, Guy was paroled. He married an old acquaintance, Kate. He started a limo service and several other businesses, most of which he used to traffic drugs. Guy made a lot of money, but there was a price. It was always the fear, always having to turn around, always having to look behind you to know, always being concerned whether phones were tapped, you know, always wondering if you were gonna get shot and killed during a drug deal. Along with Guy's paranoia, came an increasing addiction to drugs. Soon it was more than Kate could stand, so she left. Eventually, drugs cost Guy everything he ever had and more. All the money I had, I went through. I was actually in my own home. It was in foreclosure with no running water, no electricity, no money, taking showers outside of hoses and eating where I could eat and taking sneakers out of garbage cans. I had no life. My only exit was death. I got to a point where I actually slipped my wrist to try and kill myself because I could not no longer live that life. I, I wanted to stop using and I couldn't. No matter what I tried, programs or anything, I, I couldn't stop. Guy was arrested again for drug possession. He was out on bail when he ran into an old friend who invited Guy to church. I thought, well, what do I got to lose? I've tried everything else. Later that afternoon, the service was still on Guy's mind. That preacher said, just ask Jesus. So I sat up and I said, you know, God, I know you're out there somewhere. I know you're out there somewhere. I believe you're out there somewhere. I've been brought up that way, to believe that there's a God, but I don't know you. And I said, you know what? I began to weep and cry and I go, I began to repent. I said, you know how many people I've hurt? I said, I'm sorry. How many families are destroyed? How many people I killed by selling them drugs or, or causing money to go into a, into a place where somebody was murdered or whatever? And, and it just began to affect me terribly. And I began to weep and cry. And I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything I've ever done. And I said, Jesus, please take this life over and come into this heart. Take me. All of a sudden, this love started filling me and filling me. It was overwhelming me. And I began to discern or compare that this love was everything I've been looking for through drugs, alcohol, women, power, money. And I realized, wait a minute, it's you. It's you I've been looking for this whole time. You. Guy couldn't wait to tell everyone he knew about his encounter with Christ. He even flew out to tell his ex-wife. Kate couldn't believe the change. I saw the same person in human form, but he was entirely different in every other way. He was just so alive, I, I saw what born again really meant. The change Kate saw in Guy prompted her to make her own decision to accept Christ. I was in the New Age just really looking for a supernatural God. If God was God, he could still do supernatural things. And I didn't find him in the supernatural uh, through the New Age, but when I saw Guy, changed totally. I knew that anything that could change that man was the God that I was looking for. While Guy was a changed man, his past was still on trial. When he went back to court... They ignored my life sentence. And, a, and here I had a mandatory minimum four years to do. I walked out of the courtroom with probation and no longer went to prison. Within two months, Guy and Kate remarried. Now I'm a pastor of a church. Uh, director of a drug program, which we have a discipleship for men and women. 
and we minister in the jails. We own a construction company called Covenant Builders where we can disciple these men and then teach them a trade. I can honestly say that I am married to a man of God and very honored that God has chosen me to be his wife. He, um, he has the highest integrity of any man I know. He's honest, he's faithful. He cares selflessly about others. Um, he's just really a true picture of what Jesus is to me and my family and to the people around here. Today, it's not about wealth or fame or power. I am so rich, rich with his love, rich with his presence, rich in the things that a knowledge of truth that have set me free.